Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Los Angeles Public Library YouTube and Facebook channel. My name is Dora Ho, Young Adult Librarian for the Los Angeles Public Library. And I'm so excited that you are here with us today for another fantastic program for teens. I also want to give a special thank you to the Library Foundation for helping to make this program possible. We are joined today by two special guests in our studio. Paolo Davanzo and Lisa Marr are filmmakers, educators, and community cinema activists. Work is a catalyst for the creative collaboration and positive social change. For the past 20 years, they have been facilitating workshops and screening at the Echo Park Film Center, a nonprofit neighborhood media arts center with a focus on free films and video education programs for local youth. And let's welcome Paolo and Lisa. Welcome to the studio. Hello. Hey, everybody. Wow, it is so good to be back. Are you excited to be back, Paolo? I'm so excited. And guess what I just found going through my wallet? The thing that everyone should have and never okay. leave home without, your library card. But if you're okay. here, perhaps you're already dialed in. We love the library, and we're so honored. Thank you, Dora. Thank you, all the good people at the LAPL. We're pumped. So we are back. This is session three of three. So maybe you've been with us for the whole journey uh, this spring, or maybe you're just tuning in for the first time today, or maybe you're tuning in later, um, but welcome. Uh, we've had three amazing workshops. This is number three about making films because what's coming up, the Teens of LA Film Festival sponsored by the Los Angeles Public Library. And, um, you may uh, make submissions June 1st to 30th, 2021. So that's coming up. So hopefully you're working on your films right now or you're thinking, okay, time is ticking. I got to get going. I got to work on my um, submission. So we're here to help. The first session we did was just sort of how to make a movie, just general like movie stuff. Um, we went over pre-production, production, post-production, post everything you need. The second one was about what, Paolo? Second Session. Experimental cinema. So maybe, you know, we, we like to experiment. What does that mean? We know narratives, Hollywood movies, TV movies, but are there other ways to tell stories? And we said, yes, there were. And we took you a journey down the experimental route. Right on. So today we're going to talk about a different kind of film, documentaries. So, but the main thing is let's make movies. Let's make movies together. Let's make movies about our city. Let's make movies about ourselves. Let's make movies about the issues. Ooh, 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 ooh. That's, that's the main thing. We're making some movies. So uh, for your um, teen film festival, there's several uh, subjects that you can do. Any of these will be welcome and terrific. A book trailer, what would that be, Paolo? Book trailer? I think we heard someone in San Bernardino, but they're not in LA County. So get, get, get back to LA County. We heard someone in Ventura, not LA County. What about Pacoima? What about- Lamert Park. Lamert Park says, says book trailer is um, a short film that's kind of like an ad for a book, like why you should read it. It's an exciting kind of like, you know, preview for a book. So that's great. A PSA, what does PSA stand for, Paolo? Public service announcement. So maybe trying to support a community organization that needs a little push up or highlighting something that maybe is overlooked by many in the community, PSA. Experimental, we went over last time. That's kind of, you know, the catch-all. If you wanna make something really wacky and, and um, I don't know, just spacey and more about kind of the tactile nature of the film or video about color and shapes and, and weird special effects, that can always go under experimental. If you don't know what to call it, just call it experimental. And everyone will be like, oh, yeah, experimental. Short film, live action, or animated. We know what animation is. We know what live action that's just, you know, filming. Animation is either claymation or stop motion or drawing on film or, you know, cutouts uh, or computer animation. Short film. Okay, that's self-explanatory. It's film that's short. Documentary we're going to get to right now. And micro short. That is uh, uh, it's under a minute long. And maybe even under 30 seconds. That is short. That is short, 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 short. Okay. All right, but let's get to our topic of the day, and that is what's a documentary? So if you know, if you have an idea, go ahead and put it in the chat. What do you think a documentary could be? Da, 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 da. What, what is a, any ideas, Paolo? What's a, what, what, what would you, if you, someone had to, you know, was asking you had to define it, what is a documentary? Any ideas? You know, I love, you know, words and roots of words and stems of words. So it's a document. So maybe it's documenting something in our lives. This is what I'm thinking, if we took apart the words. 
Yeah, document. A document is is something that uh, is kind of a window on the world, maybe. It's a document, right? And it's something that lasts. It's something that we can look back on. I, that's good, yeah. So here's um, a definition by someone who made up the word documentary. I mean, sometimes it's a good idea to go back to the source, right? So there was a fellow named John Grierson, and back in um, 1926, 1926, he came up with the word documentary, and his definition was the creative treatment of actuality. What do you think about that? I love it. Okay. Yes. So let's see. So long ago. Wow. Almost 100 years ago. Yeah, but I think maybe, okay, well, so it's 100 years ago, but maybe let's look at a film, a trailer for a film oh, yeah. that was made in the year 2019, wow. and it's called A Love Song for Latasha. And let's see if it represents the creative treatment of actuality. Let's see um, that. So let's check it out. Here we go. So I'm not hearing sound, but maybe the sound is coming. I think we're going to hear it in a minute. We're the hear nice it. thing about that piece is that it does have subtitles. So and that's the but power. it's always nice to have music. Some yeah. movies have subtitles and they're silent. That's okay. That's okay for a documentary. It's okay really for any movie, but um, that's okay. We're going to, I think we're going to check it out. Okay, here we go. she was as an individual they don't know they just know that she was just a young black girl who was worth the dollar and 79 cent they don't know latasha would always talk about when we got older we could own businesses because every time we go into the store they either following us giving us dirty looks disrespecting us. Don't you want to have something on your own? She wanted to be a lawyer, so that's what she was aiming for, to get good grades. She had all A's. She just tried a little bit harder. She just didn't want to end up a statistic. Sometimes I think, how did I get this far? And she not here. I know she'd be married by now. She loved the fellas. She probably would have three, two, three kids by now. She'd be an awesome mother. She was a loving person. I still appreciate her for being who she was back then. Wonderful. So thinking about the creative treatment of actuality um, in this very powerful story about a young woman from Los Angeles and uh, a story about uh, a time, 1991, in Los Angeles and Natasha, Latasha Harlins um, and her story. And using what kinds, of, what kinds of things do we even see in that short trailer? I recommend everyone watch this film. Um, what, what did we see in that? In that short clip, Paolo, that could be the creative treatment of actuality. It is a true story. Yeah, so, and once again, that was made in 1991, before a lot of you young people were even walking this earth, but please do more research about that time in the history of Los Angeles. Speak to your parents, your grandparents. Um, we did not make that film. Uh, we have no association with that film, except we feel we just recently saw it and want the world to see it. And I think it's an important film. Um, it's a library to promote and celebrate and to um, stand behind. So Lisa, great question, because we saw dramatic reenactments of time in life, right? So sometimes documentaries just film real events, meaning things happening as they unfold in front of the camera. But this film does a lot of that, it has still images, photographs, archival material, meaning material from the past, but also has recreations to bring you back to that time, to bring you back to the 80s, to the 90s, being a young child, growing up in South Los Angeles. So um, using lots of elements, Lisa, found footage, news footage, um, animation, which we did not see tonight, but this film incorporates it so beautifully. So I pass the mic back to you. Yeah, and direct animation, so many different things, interviews with 
family members and yeah, recreations, yearbook photos, many, many things went into this. And though the story takes place in um, 1991, um, the film was made in 2019. So looking back, um, but it is a story, uh, unfortunately, that still has resonance today. So these documents from the past can be just as impactful um, in the present. And the director, Sophia Nali Allison, is an amazing young um, black filmmaker, uh, Los Angeles filmmaker, very powerful work. And um, please check out that film. So another definition of documentary is life as it is, Ziga Vertov. What do you think about that, Paolo? Life as it is, what would that sort of infer? Wow, life as it is. And that, you know, all our lives are so different. So life as it is, depending if you're a young person growing up in the streets of Los Angeles or you're a child living in Mumbai or, you know, Argentina, Buenos Aires, life as it is, we all have a life, but your life is completely different from the person even down the street from you. So let's celebrate your life, your surroundings, and to document that. What a beautiful name that filmmaker had. Where, where were they from? Well, they were from Russia and they made a film about Russia, actually Ukraine, sure. when Ukraine was part of Russia in the year 1929. So we're going to see a little clip of this and it's called Man with a Movie Camera. So Ziga Vertov was um, saying that he was just going to capture life as it happened and that that was exciting enough, that life on its own is so interesting that you can just stand on a street corner and film and it's an amazing film. But if you notice... There's more going on than just turning on the camera and standing still. So let's check it out a little bit. Okay, so that's Man with the Movie Camera, 1929. Great. Oh my gosh, I would like to watch all of that, but I think it's an hour long. So we just—it's gotta... very long. It's very long. So it's basically what's known as a city symphony, which means it's celebrating the uh, the city. Um, the city is actually the main character in this film, and also we see the filmmaker making the film, and then we see the audience watching the film. So this is a film about films, and that is a documentary. But was uh, Ziga Veritov just really turning on the camera and, and leaving it there? What do you think, Paolo? Well, that's why I was confused in the beginning because I felt like, am I watching a cartoon? Is this an animated film? You know, I, I have not seen a tripod dance around by itself 
in my time. But then I thought, okay, gosh, but this is incorporating elements of life as it is, life as it is, right? Um, in creating it, that cityscape with the cars and the, the people and the trains, that was very much life as it is, but adding some you know, creativity and some passion to it. And that's allowed in the documentary category, I think. Yeah, you can have animation in your documentary. You can have um, special effects. Remember, this mo movie was made way before computers were even thought of, right? So everything was done by hand, but now we can do things with our computer editing programs. We can lay images over top of each other. We can have multiple images on a screen. And what does that you know, kind of convey um, to us as the audience? It means like motion, things are happening, like so much is going on at the same time. And that gives us the feel of what living in a big dynamic city like Los Angeles is all about, right? So the way you choose to edit all your images and gather them and layer them, um, you know, in uh, Love Song for Latasha, we saw kind of different elements, you know, they weren't maybe overlaid, um, but there was multiple images going on there. There's multiple images and techniques going on here, but they're used in a different way, but they still have powerful effects. You know, the other one was sort of more of a, a meditation on someone's life. And this is just about the dynamic reality of being alive. Um, so, yeah, interesting, right? Love okay. it. One more, one more definition here. Documentary film is the one place that our people can speak for ourselves. And that's Alanis Obamsawin. Alanis is a indigenous filmmaker from Canada who's made many, 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 many films. I believe she's in her 80s now and still making amazing films. But, um, you know, it's a good point because when films started, uh, most of the people that were making films were white men who had um, money and access to gear and privilege and all kinds of things. And Luckily, things are changing and they have changed and they are continuing to change because more people are making more films about themselves. And that's when things get exciting because everyone has a story to tell and only you can tell your own story your own way. So um, that's why we're excited that you're making movies this year. So we're going to see again some old footage, something from 1928 from a woman named Zora Neale Hurston. And maybe you've heard of her. She's a, a writer. And when she was um, gathering information for her books, she went out into um, the southern United States and she filmed some images just really for notes for herself. But the results are actually really beautiful and magical and serve as a really beautiful document of a time that many of us know not enough about. So let's check it out. Shapes like jelly all over, ha, a hip so broad, Lord, Lord, a hip so broad. My little woman, she had a baby this morning, ha. my little woman, she had a baby this morning, ha. he had blue eyes. Lord, Lord, he had blue eyes. I Anna told her it must have been the hellfire captain. I Anna told her must have been the hellfire captain. Ha, he had blue eyes. Lord, Lord, he had blue eyes. Oh, don't you hear them? A coo coo bird keep a hollering. Don't you hear them? A coo coo bird keep a hollering. It looks like rain. Lord, Lord, it looks like rain. I got a rainbow wrapped and tied around my shoulder. I got a rainbow. Wrapped and tied around my shoulder, it looked like rain. No, no, it looked like rain. Beautiful. Thank I had me down two, three so hands. Of this footage was not meant to be um, shown to audiences. They were notes for um, a black woman from the South going back to the South to document her own people and her own places and um, to inform a book that she would come to write later on. And what I love about this footage is that there's so many great details, right? 
you see everybody dancing, you get the joy of just kind of being together and, and playing and dancing together. And then you see um, the, the close-ups of the feet and everybody's different shoes and their pants. And um, it's just really cool, right? It's just the details that can make a documentary really beautiful. And I feel like even though that footage is 90 years old, it still feels contemporary in a way because we still dance and we still play and we still find joy in being together. So I'm really grateful that that footage exists and that we get to see it, even though it wasn't um, initially considered to be, you know, a film that would be shown to an audience. And I think Lisa beautifully said, you know, everyone is a storyteller, but not everyone has the tools to tell their story. And that's why we're so excited that you're making these films. So the contest is wonderful and we support showing your work anywhere you can, but the creation is the most beautiful thing. And just like everyone has is a dreamer, but not everyone has the access to dreams in the sense that the LAPL, by the way, get your membership if you don't have it, allows that access. You can get books. So if you want to learn more about Zora Neale Hurston, you can go in there and get some books and read the books that she wrote. So anyway, let's thank you, Lisa. Let's continue. So many great resources, yes. So let's just kind of go over again, just quickly. Um, things that documentaries can do. They can record, they can reveal, and they can preserve. So that's kind of like what we're talking about, like old timey footage, right? We just, you know, record this stuff and later we see it and it blows our minds decades or centuries later to persuade or promote. That's, you know, if I gotta, if I wanna convince you of something or I wanna, you know, the PSA, the public service announcement that kind of falls into that realm or I wanna promote something to analyze or interrogate, to ask the big questions, the social justice issues and to express. So that's kind of the creative element. And of course your documentary could have all these parts in, in it, right? Or maybe, you know, totally different um, reason for making it that only uh, you know, and that's why you're bringing your story to the world. All right, so quickly just running through thinking when, if you, yeah, so you're thinking about making your documentary, here's maybe some, some elements to think about. Who is it about or what is it about, right? Documentaries having a great um, subject a compelling person or a, a really um, important issue, you know, that's kind of a good place to start sometimes. What's the center of my story? Content, what's the film about, right? What's the story? What happens to this this person, right? Or this this place or this this thing? That's kind of the, the how it goes. And it can be, I think, you know, we're sitting at home thinking, okay, gosh, but what would I make a film about? Maybe you like to sew, maybe you like to do creative writing, maybe you like to skateboard, maybe your neighbor works on construction or is a librarian, let's make a film about them, right? There's so many things you can make films about. So these are all just planting seeds, but any idea is a good idea if you thought of it, so. What's the easiest thing to make a documentary about? How to get out of the sun when you're filming on Zoom. Because <laughs> I'm just having a wonderful time. This should be its own documentary. Maybe your family and yourself because you have 24 hour access to them. Right. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. Yourself. You can make a documentary about yourself. You're with yourself. It's, you know, you might even discover something about yourself you didn't know by making a documentary about yourself. So the setting is, you know, where does the film take place? And the place itself, like uh, we're going to maybe check a, a little bit uh, of a film called uh, This is the L.A. River that was made by the EPFC Youth Class. You know, sometimes a place can be the character. Sometimes Los Angeles itself can be the main character in a film. So it doesn't have to just be like a human. Uh, it could be, you know, an animal. It could be, it could be a chair. You know, maybe this is like story of a chair. It doesn't, you know, it can be anything, right? And then the how to tell your story is all like the fun stuff that, that makes your story unique. So the style, the tone, um, what kind of sounds you're using, what kind of images you're using, um, what kind of language, if there's any uh, language in there, are there subtitles? Um, I thought they said meatballs for a minute over here, meatballs, but it says materials. You, you wow. make a film about meatballs, but yes. um, materials. So, you know, what kinds of materials are you using? Uh, what kinds of, um, you know, like, is there animation and, and what, what kind of animation is it? Sound, when you're thinking about it, you know, people always think about documentaries, talking heads. You know what that means? It means these two people in these squares going like blah, 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 talking heads, talking heads. You know, you can do that and that's fine for interviews, but um, we don't have to have the sound and the image match. You can separate them and you can do that pretty easily in digital editing programs, or you can just shoot images and then have someone maybe talking separately. And sometimes that's easier for people if you just interview them and don't film them. Um, sometimes that makes them less shy and they tell you great stories. So what if um, I want a silent movie? Can I make a silent movie without yeah. sound? Silence, yeah. no sound at all. And, and on the bottom, silence, it says there. 
Silence is beautiful. Yep. And um, just images, is, you can tell a whole story with no sound at all. Um, you can have ambient sound. That's just kind of the sound in the room. And um, you can have a voiceover. So maybe some images of my chair and then someone talking. Images, you can record new footage on whatever device you have, a phone, a camera, a DSLR, you know, Super 8 camera, whatever. Um, you can make recreations. Sometimes we can't get a hold of um, our ancient relatives, our ancestors, because they're not here anymore, but we could do recreations of them and get someone else to play their part. And uh, we can have archival footage or found footage. Maybe you got home movies or old photos or things like that, animation and abstract things, just coloring on film. And again, we saw a little bit of that in the first um, example we showed today. The last thing I'm going to invite you to think about is who is your audience? Who is this film for? Is it for your family? Is it for your friends? Is it for the whole world? Sometimes the smallest, most intimate stories, like the story of you, is also a universal story. It's a story that um, people around the world can relate to. And sometimes movies can make us feel not so alone, especially in times where we're separated and we can't see each other and things feel like sort of like lonely and far apart. A movie, a documentary, um, specifically here is a way we can feel connected um, to each other, to our friends, to our family, to the whole human race. Um, and just, it brings us together as people. And that's what we celebrate. We celebrate our joys, our sorrows, our triumphs, our resilience. And it, it gives us, um, it gives us hope. And, and the best documentaries, I think, do that. They give us hope. They inspire us um, to be part of this human family and um, the, family, the natural world and, um, yeah, all those things. Do we have time to take a little peek at this is the L.A. River? We do. It's only 27 minutes. Okay, let's show. take a peek. We've got beaucoup de temps. So this is a film about a river, the L.A. River. You've got one in your city, the L.A. River. Here it is. I didn't know there's a river around here, so. So you were not aware of the river till tonight? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Could you describe the LA River for us? Okay, do it. Yeah. Um, it's dirty and it has like, um, yeah, rocks and it has like, like trash in it and like stuff. I've never seen a river that's concrete, that grows trees in it. And that people live in it. Um, I think, it, uh, as far as I know, it's uh, it's a concrete tube with um, with trash and dirty rainwater. It's like a it's like a uh, oversized um, like dramatic gutter. I think. Can you imagine or can you picture people like using it as a gathering place? Well, I wouldn't go in it knowing that it's dirty. I don't know. It's got sort of like that three-eyed Simpsons fish. Yeah. <laughs> kind of, you know. I mean, this isn't the cleanest city I've lived in. You know, I can't imagine where I'm from in the Midwest. There's like big rivers and you go and you like hang out in the dirty water and you like inner tube and all that stuff. But um, I can't even like picture a day at the LA River here. If they fix the river, if they restored it back to how it used, or close to how it used to be, would you go hang out there with friends, or what would you do? Or um, I'd probably go have a picnic there. I would love to see a return to that. Yeah, that would be great. That would be like a good place to visit, you know, from the city, you know. It's like you don't see nothing natural no more. It's all you see is pollution, smog, cars, traffic. 
floor would be nice if they fixed it because it looks old and it looks like they haven't done anything with it. Sounds nice. Yeah, no, that, that that would be really pleasant, I think, because I, I don't think, I think River at this point is kind of a, a, a like, I think that's kind of incorrect uh, naming for it. So uh, that, that sounds pleasant. <laughs> The Los Angeles River begins in Canoga Park. Although its headwaters are much further upstream in the creeks and the arroyos that run into the canyons of the Santa Susana, Santa Monica, and San Gabriel Mountains, the river runs through the San Fernando Valley, the Glendale Narrows, downtown Los Angeles, and empties into the Pacific Ocean at the port of Long Beach. The journey is 51 miles long. All right. Wow. So that is the beginning of This is the L.A. River, a collaborative film. That film was made in 2007 by the okay. L.A. Uh, okay. Yeah, the EPFC um, youth class. And I think about 30 teens worked on that film together. And, you know, we know maybe more about the river and it's more in the news. And um, but it's still um, it's still really powerful to hear those comments. A lot of people don't know there is a river in Los Angeles. So. Again, use documentaries to to share your world with with the entire world. Um, and you saw some uh, photos. That's from the LAPL photo collection. So that's a great source for you. Canopy, of course, is a source of many, many great movies and a great way to become a filmmaker is to watch movies and make your own. Uh, Lynda.com has some editing help and books. There's some great books about um, filmmaking in general. And of course, you've always got friends at Echo Park Film Center. We do free classes. We've got our Vimeo um, channel to see films like This is the LA River. You can watch the whole film. It's about 30 minutes long. We do free filmmaking workshops for teens and kids. And uh, we have a new series called Cine Kids. That's the second Thursday of the month. That's online. So if, you're, uh, if you have some works in progress and you'd like some feedback um, from other kids, um, please join us for that, echoparkfilmcenter.org. And that was a very, very quick uh, race through what documentaries can be. But documentaries can be many, many, many things. And um, we are excited to see what you come up with. Yeah, we're so excited. And that film, you know, was shot on film film because it makes a funny noise. So it had a different look to it. It's, we held it up in the beginning of the presentation. It was celluloid. So those young people shot on a motion picture camera. But use anything you have at hand. Use your phone. Use a computer. There's free animation software. Maybe you don't have access to a computer. Maybe you don't have a phone with a camera. Maybe you, you can just draw pictures and maybe a buddy can take snaps of them on a phone. Like the, really, if you need help, Please contact the film center if, if you're having if you're struggling with the way you can tell your story. But you can do it. We're behind you. We support you. Um, and I think if you have questions, we're going to channel that energy to the chat. Um, or, or at least Samari, sorry to cut you off. I just wanted to remind people the format that they, we shot that film on. But what were you finishing saying there? I was just saying that filmmaking is a wonderful world into all kinds of amazingness. And it just channels everything you're thinking about, everything you're feeling, everything you're seeing, sensing, experiencing, um, you know, just it, it all comes into everything that's going on can, can be channeled into your film and shared with the world. So um, we're excited about your stories and we cannot wait to see what you make for the Teens of LA Festival. But you know, you don't need a festival to make a film. It's a, it's a it's a nice kind of goal because it's out there. But you can make films every day, any day, always. Um, you know, it's just a great way. It's kind of like a, a visual journal, and that's always fun to just kind of document your days, your world, your thoughts, your ideas, the issues that affect you. So yeah, documentaries are great for that. So I'm not sure if there are any questions. There may not be questions. Which there is may not. Be. You can watch this later. It'll be archived, which we love about this series. If you missed episode one and two, you can you can uh, tune in and check those out. That's right. um, but anyone, I mean, we can hear you. We can feel your energy out there. We can feel your <laughs> cinematic love. If not, maybe we'll pass the baton back to our host, Dora Ho, one of the librarians at the LAPL. Yeah, thanks for having us. Oh, look at this wonderful banner I see. That's yeah, cool. that's great. Teens, Teen Film Festival, LAPL.org. 
Thank you so much, Paolo and Lisa. What a great program. Uh, just hope all the teens, you know, utilize the, the library resources and, you know, the Echo Park Film Center and also, you know, join our teen film, you know, uh, teen LA, teens of LA film festival. Um, the, uh, they can send in their entries between June 1st to June 30th. So we'd love to see your film. So, participate, you know, make make a film. So yeah, we'd love to see those. So you can check out more information on the website. The website is on the screen below. So yeah, thank you so much for coming today, Paolo and Lisa. Wonderful program. It's so great to have you both. Thank have you. a great day, everybody. Bye, friends. Bye. See you in the movie.